Hi there, it's Phil Binks here. Thanks for joining me. If you're like me, I had an old iMac, which was perfectly good. It had a really good screen, 27 inch monitor. And when it came to the time that I really felt I needed to upgrade to a newer Mac that carried the M1 chips or the M2 chips, so you might be on a Mac Studio like myself, or you might be buying one of the iMac minis, and you've still got an older, Intel based 27 inch iMac. The problem is that if you wanted to do anything with it, you can never use it as a proper screen. So having a two screen setup is an ideal situation, but there's no real easy way to do that. You could never properly within the Mac ecosystem make an iMac just work as a screen. But there is now a way to do that and I'm going to take you through the way that you can do that using the Lunar Display solution. Now, just to give you some background, my Mac, uh, and I'll show you the setup that I've got here now. This is the Mac Studio with the screen that's being used on that Mac Studio. To my right hand side, just here, is my old iMac. And you can see the iMac sitting there. The old iMac ran Catalina as an operating system, and that was the last it could use. This iMac was from 2013, but it works perfectly. I love it as a monitor, and really trashing it seemed to me like a really bad idea. So what I did was worked out how to be able to use it as a secondary Mac. Now, there's also some other benefits that you will get from doing this. One is that you obviously retain your old iMac rather than chucking it in the bin and just losing it and losing all the value of it. The other thing is that within your iMac, you're very likely to have a hard drive. And this one of mine has a one terabyte hard drive. So not only would I be losing a screen, but I'd also be using some pretty valuable storage space. Now, the other thing is that the screen, if you use it as another screen, it's obviously got its own graphics card built in, so that helps it work as well and takes some of the load off of the host computer. So there's all those advantages. So what I ended up doing is I ended up moving a lot of my files onto another hard drive, moving everything that I needed to over to my Mac Studio. But what that did then is it freed up the hard drive for me to use it as a storage system because it's all on the same network. But I'll go into that a little bit further as we move along. Just to give you an idea of what we're aiming to do, we are looking at screen sharing. So having two monitors, one where I can move an image from this monitor over to that and back again, or use both monitors within the same operating system. So here's an example of what we can do, and I've left myself here on the screen below at the bottom, and this is a screenshot, a live screenshot of the two screens that we've got together. And what I'll do is I'll just bring up an image on the screen, and you can see that there, and what we're aiming to do is be able to move this image onto the right hand side iMac Intel screen. Watch this. And it will do that quite happily. Now there's a bit of a delay between the camera that I'm filming my desktop on to the real uh, screen sharing that's the, the larger two, two sizes, but it's very, very responsive. I wouldn't necessarily say that using this solution would be best for you if you are using video editing and fast moving things, but it makes proper use of a secondary screen. That's really the challenge. That's what we're going to do. And I'll be able to take you through how we would do that right now. What does it take to be able to do this? Well, I've made a little bit of a video here. So what we have here is the Lunar Display box. It's a very small box, as you can see, versus my hands. It's less than two inches square. And this one contains the USB-C version of the Lunar Display. There is an HDMI and there is a DisplayPort option as well, which work very much the same way. There's this little covering pad, which tells you where to download the software. And this is the little USB-C dongle that you would be plugging into your Mac. So this is valid for either a Mac Studio like I've got or a Mac Mini. 
with Thunderbolt ports or USB ports that support display protocols. So let's just plug, plug this into the Mac. So here it is around the back of the Mac, gives you an idea of the, uh, the size of it and it literally just clips in and notice I've plugged it into a Thunderbolt port. This is very important and I'll clarify this later. But as soon as I plugged it in, it automatically launched the Luna software on my Mac. So let me go into the requirements for the USB-C ports. This is from the Luna website and I'll be putting a link to the website in the, the notes below. So this will only work with a USB-C port that supports Thunderbolt or supports DisplayPort and your ports should have a little icon next to them which shows which kind of ports they are. It will not work with the standard USB-C port because those standard USB-C ports do not support the display protocol which is required here. You don't need to worry about that if you've got a Mac Studio because you've got at least four ports on the back of your Mac Studio and there's two or four ports on the Mac Minis that you might have and also of course there are several MacBook Pro models that also have Thunderbolt or DisplayPort based USB-C ports. So here I am on the secondary Mac, i.e. my iMac, and I'm about to launch the Luna secondary software. So it's a separate installation from the Luna site and you launch that on your secondary display and the secondary display in this case is the iMac itself. So you launch that and it takes over the whole screen. So you have the Luna secondary splash screen which shows what version you're on. There's a few preferences available to you. I tend to use it with the cursor preview off, I don't need that. I have it in full screen mode and what that means is that uh, there's it will ignore any multitasking gestures that might be picked up by the secondary the iMac itself when I'm trying to do those things on the Mac Studio so I have that on if you have multiple lunar displays you need to select the office option otherwise you've got a software update option and logs and the quit option. Let's scroll down to the bottom of the screen where it says ready to become a display and you can use the Wi-Fi manual connection if you want to. More about how we might connect in a moment but also at the bottom there it says press and hold the escape key to quit Luna or if you roll your cursor over there you can click on the escape button and that will quit the Luna application. So the Luna application right now is essentially running on that secondary display. So now we'll switch over to the primary display and remember the primary display is the one running on your Mac Studio, Mac Mini or your MacBook Pro for instance. So it's the main display. Let me show you some of the options that are available within the Luna display drop down. Firstly you've got the settings. You can allow connections via the local network which is what you really want to do and I'm in the home scenario so that will work for me. Then we've got this Lunar Display tab and the Lunar Display tab says when you insert the Lunar Display dongle, launch the Lunar Display app. And then below that you've got a drop down that says what do you want to do with the Lunar Display, the second display. Do you want it to mirror your main display or use it as a second display where you've got the screen and drag windows from one to the other. So second display is the way that I'm using mine. We can select resolution, it supports 4K or 5K and the maximum refresh rate available is 60 Hz. The Lunar Display does have the option of supporting iPad use so you can mirror your Mac screen on your iPad. So there are various artistic benefits for being able to do that plus it supports a teleprompter mode as well which essentially inverts the screen. And finally, this is the way that I'm connecting 
I'm using it as a Mac to Mac selection. So you can use the allow any network interface. You can connect via Wi-Fi. You can connect via Ethernet only, and that's the way that mine is working. Let me very quickly explain that to you. So my iMac here is connected via an Ethernet cable to a router, which is the other side of my Mac Studio. And my Mac Studio, which is just here, is connected to that same router. So essentially there is a wired connection between the two computers and the two screens, if you want to look at it that way. Also, you can use the Thunderbolt connection if you have a Thunderbolt based Mac for the secondary screen. Most of them aren't, of course. I use the Ethernet only connector. The Lunar Display options include as a, a Vitals dialog box, which shows the latency between this and the secondary monitor, and generally standard options in the drop down boxes there. Now we'll have a look quickly at the Lunar Display main screen. So this is the window that comes up as soon as Lunar Display has connected. You can select to have the secondary display on the left, the right or customize it. The custom button opens up the Mac settings and allows you to set where you want the secondary monitor to appear. So this works really well if you've got the screen above your main primary screen, for instance. So here we are again, just showing the screenshot on the left hand side, the Mac Studio display, and I'm able to easily move that control window from the left screen to the Intel Mac screen on the right hand side. And that is true for any window that you have open whilst Lunar Display is running between both your primary Mac and your secondary Mac. So it's quite clear to see that you can move the window from the left to the right. So here we go, that's how that would work. So that's how it all works. And I want to just be a little bit more clear with you how I do this and how it all works for you. So let me move into a situation where you can see the screen once more. So on my desktop there, I've got my iMac here on the right hand side. Now the routine for me is that I launch and open the iMac first. Obviously what comes up is a password requirement. So you put in your password if you can, and I use a keypad shortcut to put the password in for me. That then launches the, the software, which in this case would be Catalina on the iMac. And on the Catalina iMac, I would then launch the Lunar secondary software. You then come to your main Mac, whichever flavor of new Mac you've got, and then you launch that software and you launch the Lunar main software and it will automatically link. It quickly finds the screen between the two and then I'm able to, and I'll show you once more, very easily move that screen from one to the other. And it's very quick. There's no, re there is latency, but it's perfect for anything that's not got fast moving subjects and you just want a secondary screen. The other advantage is that you've got the hard drive that's in that machine that's still available to you. You can store things on that as a hard drive for all of your documents and data. I would suggest that you add the Lunar Display software to your login application. So as soon as you log in, then it will automatically launch the Lunar software and automatically bring the second screen into play. Remember, you do have to launch the iMac software first and make sure you've logged in there. So you could use your Apple Watch to log in if you want to as well. There's several ways to log in. But essentially, the only thing that I've got plugged in, and you can't see it here, is a mouse. And I just tap that to bring the screen up and then put the password in using NumPad software. So this is the Lunar website. I'll leave a link in the area below so that you can have a look at this. The Lunar display is described here. You can actually buy it from this site if you want to. And there's a variety of different modes that you've got available to you. So I think this is one of those purchases that you use because there's so many different ways of using it. And even if you stop using it, 
um, between a, your Mac to Mac. You can then use it from your Mac to your iPad or you could even use it in what they call headless mode. So a variety of different ways to use it. Price wise, you're looking at about $150 ish. So I hope that you found that useful. If you've got any questions, please ask me in the comments. Thanks for watching and I look forward to helping you in the near future. Bye for now.